good morning children welcome back to the social session children in the previous class we tried to understand about the uh, nomadic life leading people in the present days like chenchus and yanadis we have come across so today we shall learn about the shared living what kind of a shared living they uh, they like to live and what they shared about each other and uh, we shall also learn uh, the next part that is uh, from food gathering how did they learn about a uh, food growing all these days they were leading a nomadic life where they were gathering the food through hunting or otherwise uh, collecting the uh, fruits and other wild honey from the forest but uh, slowly uh, the knowledge of uh, growing the food they have got today we shall see that one uh, so we have learned that these uh, people these uh, earlier people used to live in small uh, groups and they were uh, nomadic in nature nomadic means people moving from one place to another place it appears that both women and children uh, participated in the hunting and food gathering and women and children were very active in uh, food gathering and hunting of small animals because hunting uh, large animals requires uh, uh, to understand the behavior of the animal it is not that easy and this was probably done mostly by men because it is not uh, possible by the women as well as by the children so hunting large animals usually done by the men hunter gatherers uh, generally shared the food uh, with uh, they collected with all the group members it's not their own food because with the help of others they have hunted the animal so they share the meat they share the fish they share the fruits leaves and uh, many kinds of uh, tubers and small quantities of edible grains also they share with the entire group uh, today uh, whatever we eat doesn't perish quickly but whatever they used to collect from the forest they perish very fastly so we also have jars many kinds of refrigerator we have okay if anything is uh, left over we put it in the refrigerator and we can store them and we can store in the tins for some months but the earliest people don't have uh, the knowledge of uh, storing them in the jars and especially they move from one place to another place so it is uh, not uh, possible for them to carry all these uh, grains or the food that's the reason uh, they used to share with uh, all the people in the group and they used to get it finished since they shared all the food uh, and had free access to the resources of the forest hunter gatherers uh, doesn't have any rich or poor classes among them everybody is treated equally and uh, all of them each other they treated equally and they also took all the important decisions by gathering by discussing them together so whatever the decision may be it may be rela relating to the group it may be relating to the individual all the decisions they used to take up uh, together as we take decisions in our family today in the family we take decisions together whether in your family it is taken uh, uh, all together or by individually we take mostly the decisions uh, uh, by the head of the family but here there is nothing like uh, uh, rich or poor in the uh, group so they used to treat everybody equally and all the decisions also were taken uh, all together and even though they hunted for wild animals but uh, these people had great respect and regard towards the uh, uh, wild animals plants and even to the rivers and uh, hills they had a great respect and regard towards them and they often worshiped them so that they may get enough food all the time they worshiped the animals before eating them they worshiped the rain they worshiped the forest the plants so that they can get enough food all the time and we can now imagine the life of the early people who hunted and gathered food in the forest now let us come from food gathering to growing food how did they got the knowledge of growing the food let us understand now so for thousands of years human beings uh, lived by hunting and gathering the food they started growing crops only 12000 years ago it was only 12000 years ago that the knowledge of growing the food that means agriculture cultivation growing the food got started only 12000 years ago very recently it got started because for thousands of years they lived only by hunting and gathering and uh, why did they change their lifestyle let us find out there was a around uh, 12000 years ago there was a great change in the climate of the earth because of this uh, change uh, 
the earth started becoming warm previously it was cold and now it started becoming warm cold okay now it started becoming warm so this warm conditions led to the uh, great change in the natural vegetation natural vegetation in the sense what is vegetation here vegetation means vegetation the small plants and trees which are grown in a region is called as vegetation natural vegetation means naturally which are grown which grows by the nature itself is called as natural vegetation so so there is a great change in this natural vegetation because of earth getting warm so what changes appeared here mean the forests have turned into the grasslands now what are grasslands pastures where greeny layers of tract of land for found grasslands have come and these grasslands are suitable for grazing you know sheep grazing cow grazing buffalo grazing taking them for food is called as grazing so sheep and goats uh, were taken for uh, uh, grazing in the on these grasslands they also had uh, grains that can be eaten even by the human beings also some edible grains were there edible in the sense which can be eaten edible means which can be eaten so these edible grains were there so these edible grains uh, were suitable even for the human beings so these all made them from food gathering to travel to food growing and these all happened only 12000 years ago so this is a brief history how the human uh, civilization got turned from the early man of food gathering and leading a nomadic life to food growing so slowly this knowledge has uh, got uh, uh, started expanding and they started bringing these plants and animals uh, under their control and that is called as domestication it's called as domestication bringing them under control domestication is, is nothing but sir how the plants can be brought under their control sir yes under what climatic conditions it is growing and when it ripens so this knowledge they started slowly bringing them under their control so now learning to grow crops uh, and uh, tend animals that means growing rearing animals they started men women children probably observe the places where edible plants are grown first where these plants are being grown edible plants that mean edible grains uh, giving plants where are they grown especially they have identified the places how new plants are sprouted from the seeds they have understood you know from the seed from the seed how a small sprout comes out okay that's a small sprout which comes out so this is a seed which grows as a plant and people they started looking after the plants protecting them from birds and animals not to spoil them and uh, so that they can grow and they can ripen and uh, many people lived in the areas where these uh, edible plants are grown they got uh, almost in the grasslands where the edible uh, grains grew began to rely more on these grains uh, grains for their food previously they used to hunt but now they started depending upon these grains which are grown so in this way different groups of people across the world in different parts of the world they became slowly farmers they slowly became farmers so different people in different parts of the world they learned how to grow paddy wheat barley and uh, pulses millets tubers vegetables so this different uh, people try to know different kinds of uh, things when they came into contact with each other they have exchanged their ideas if i learned how to grow paddy and you have learned how to grow pulses they have exchanged this knowledge and this knowledge got expanded with the contact and they started growing different kinds of crops and vegetables similarly people also have allowed gentle animals gentle animal means which are not that dangerous okay not dangerous animals so those gentle animals they started allowing them to come into their camps wherever they have uh, put their residential area into that camps they started allowing them gentle coming into their uh, camps and uh, they eat grass and other leftover food like dogs pigs uh, goats uh, sheep these kind of things which come very near to them they eat grass and uh, the leftover food 
they may also have protected uh, these animals from other wild animals also if these animals are put you can even protect yourself from the other wild animals in the process of uh, herders got plenty of benefits like regular supply of meat because uh, they are the herders herders mean who are herders herders mean the people who graze animals who take uh, these uh, goats and sheep uh, for uh, grazing are called as herders because they have a group a complete uh, group of uh, goats and sheep with them so that can supply uh, continuously the meat and uh, even milk animal skin also can be regularly supplied if these uh, herders are settled and later they started using oxen and donkeys to lift the weights and for carrying loads and plowing the field slowly this knowledge has expanded and domestication has got started in the next class children we shall learn how the animals got uh, domesticated uh, by the human beings and how they were useful in transforming the life thank you children